Now, in this revision video, we're going to revise the uh, theme of cycles. Now, what a cycle means? Now, cycles just means things are going round and round and round, right? But what can go round and round and round repeatedly? Well, we, our humans notice that there are repeated patterns of change in nature. Examples of these cycles are life cycles or living things. And for non-living things, we notice a water cycle. And understanding these is uh, very important. It helps us to predict events. When we understand these cycles, we can predict what will happen and we can predict uh, the processes that can happen. We can definitely appreciate Earth as a self-sustaining system and understand how best we can uh, keep our Earth sustainable and, and preserve and conserve things. So for the living things part, you must show an understanding that different living things have different life cycle. For example, animals, we have animals with three-stage life cycle and with four-stage life cycle. You learn a three stage life cycle. Typically, you describe it by egg, by young, and adult. And the adult will lay eggs again. And then for a four stage life cycle, you will definitely see two things that are not found here. The egg, right, will hatch into larva. Larva will grow into a pupa. In the pupa stage, the animal will undergo metamorphosis, a change into an adult. Adult will mate and lay eggs. Now, for plants, the life cycle is also quite simple. It's just a seed will grow into a seedling or young. And this process here, where seed turns into a seedling, is called germination. And germination requires conditions like warmth, oxygen, and water. Is light needed for germination? No, light is not needed. A seedling will grow into an adult. Adult plant, of course, if uh, we're talking about flowering plants here, the adult plants will start to flower and you start to, and here there'll be some stages here. So at P5, you'll definitely learn in this part here, right? Between adult to seed, there are some stages. So I'm also doing a revision on your uh, flowering plants here. From adult without flowers to adult with flowers. And this will go to the what happened to adults with flowers and pollinators when the first stage, first stage of pollination will happen. Pollination is a transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma. Either of the same kind of flower, or the same flower, or different, or a different flower, or another flower on the of the same kind but on a different plant. All right, and if this thing happens, then a fertilization will happen next. When fertilization happens, then you have your fruit being formed. Your fruit being formed and the ovary becomes the fruit. The ovules inside the ovary becomes the seeds. And then you have your seed dispersal by the different ways like water, like by explosive action, like by wind or by animal. And only then we can have your germination happening. Okay, germination. One thing I like to note is when I mark on my students' work, sometimes they are confused between seed dispersal and pollination. Right, because here I talk about, oh, it can be pollinated by wind or by animals. Alright, and they confuse with this part, a wind and animal. Don't be confused. Huh? Pollination is about moving pollen grains. Dispersal is about moving seeds. Right? Now, you have to memorize the life cycle, back life, life cycle, huh, of a few animals. Butterfly, cockroach, grasshopper, mosquito, beetle, chicken and frog. You must know how many stages of the life cycle and be able to identify them very quickly. So here, let's take a look. Does it lay eggs? Yes, yes. Stages 3, 4. Stages A. Lay eggs, have three stage life cycle, have six legs. Oh, very big clue. Six legs straight away, you know it's an insect. So in this question, they mix up, they combine two things. Huh? What you know, what you should know about characteristics of living things, whether they have scaly skin, they have hard outer covering, exoskeleton. Here, six legs tells you it's insect. And life cycle. So they are combining two different topics together. Does it lay eggs? Yes. Stages four stages. 
six six also. So both are insects right now. Huh? But one's insect with four stage life cycle, one's an insect with three stage life cycle. Let's take a look. A is the one with three stage life cycle. Butterfly is four stage. Frog is not an insect. Cockroach is three stage. Hen is not an insect. Answer is three. But just to be very clear, let's check on the other side. Girls must know one sometimes, huh? Um, very often we will actually have two correct options on this side because we want to force you to check on the other side so don't just depend on checking a half of the question uh, to get the answer now you know that B is an animal with four stage life cycle four stage, let's check house line four stage life cycle okay, mm, this question shouldn't be here, this option because house line is not among the animals here okay, so luckily just checking animal A, we can find the answer. Okay, so again, my apologies. I chose a question that isn't very good because housefly shouldn't appear in test questions, uh, unless we give you more information about it. Okay. Now, next one. Under cycles, we also learn like this. So frog life cycle. You now frog has three stage life cycle. So I hear they show so many things here, because here there are actually trying to demonstrate to you, you can actually look in at the picture, you can actually just place it in different stages. So you see is the eggs, eggs will hatch into tadpole B, and tadpole will grow into a frog with back legs, and then it will grow front legs, and the tail will shorten, and then it become an adult. They will then lay eggs, and the cycle repeats itself. Now this is a quite a common question. The adult female frog lay many eggs in the water at a time. How does this help the frog ensure that their species will not become extinct? There are two parts to the answer. I'm going to write it here as a small space. Huh? Part 1 of the answer is this. Having more eggs ensure that some of the eggs can hatch and the young can survive to become adults. Now some of you answer differently. Some of you talk about uh, having more eggs will increase the chances of it growing into an adult, which is fine. Perfectly fine. Okay? Why is it that only some of the eggs can become adults? Because some of the eggs will be eaten up by its predators. Some of the tadpoles will be eaten up by predators. Some of the younger frogs are eaten up by predators. So after many of them have been eaten up, a few will survive the adult. The second part is this. So when the young can survive to be adults, to mate and lay eggs, to continue the life cycle. That's the second part. But mating and laying eggs by continuing a life cycle that will ensure that the species will not become extinct extinct means it goes completely gone huh? no more of such animals if it can continue to lay eggs and reproduce of however then of course the species will not go extinct fill in the blanks here with different stages stages in the life cycle of a mealworm beetle you must know mealworm beetle and grasshopper this will be four stage life cycle. You can write in any any part. I let's say I start with egg here. You can write egg here. Of course you can. Huh? Egg, larva, pupa, adult. Very simple. Egg, young, adult. Very simple. Based on the diagram above, state one similarity between the life cycle of a mealworm and a grasshopper. Similarity in the life cycle. So here be very careful. I'm not asking you for similarity in terms of Adults have six legs. No, huh? Those are characteristics of animals. You're asking here about characteristics in terms of similarity between the life cycle. Differences very easy. Three stage, four stage life cycle. That's really a difference. Similarity, we can talk about both have an egg stage. That is a similarity in the life cycle. This is correct. But if you phrase it wrongly, if you say both lay eggs, that would be wrong. Why? Because this is an answer to the question that says, how do these animals reproduce? 
that is not about the similarity between life cycle. This is an answer to what are the characteristics of insects, grasshopper and mealworm beetle, both lay eggs. Alright, so don't phrase it like this. Huh? The way you phrase it is important. So both have an egg stage. It's a similarity. Of course, can you say both have an adult stage? Yes, true. That's fine. But I prefer to choose egg stage. Why? Because not all animals lay eggs. Some will give birth to their young alive. So this is to me more significant, a more significant similarity than saying both have adult stage. Now understanding cycles, as I mentioned early on, you've got to know about these processes of pollination, fertilization, seed dispersal, germination. Alright? And you must know that living things reproduce and ensure the continuity of their kind and many characteristics of the organism are passed on from parents to their offspring. And we will assess you on the way you talk about plants. How are plants reproduced? can be by spores, it will be non-flowering plants. By seeds, there will be flowering plants. So here, you can give pictures like this to make comparison. Human reproductive system and male reproductive system. Can you identify all these parts? Female part known as stigma. Female part known as the over. Uh, I think it's pointing to the ovules. Huh? Ovule. This is the female part known as the ovary. It contains the eggs. The female part known as the womb. That's where the young, uh, the fetus of the baby develops. So which of the parts are egg cells produced? So egg cells are here and here. B and D only. Yeah? So I'm not sure where points could be to ovary or ovules. If you ovules, huh? I see it's ovules. Now, life cycle of flowering plant is here. Adult plant having flower, so the fruit have seeds. We revised this just now already when I showed you this. Huh? Adult plant and no flowers, then with flowers and pollination, fertilization, seed dispersal. Okay, so same thing has been happening here. Adult plant with no flower, adult plant with flower, then uh, becoming a fruit. So what's happening here between flowering to fruit? There should be two things happening, right? There will be pollination and fertilization. So A here from flower to fruit, right? So fertilization happens here. Can this be pollination? Possible, but here, okay, I have at least fertilization here, right? It must be pollinated and fertilized. Then fruit to seeds, seed to seedling. This part here, I know it must be about germination. So C is germination. Oh, I got the answer. Double check. B here should be dispersal. Let's check. B is dispersal. Correct? So answer is 4. And you got to know how different uh, uh, seeds are being dispersed. For example, this will be your feathery uh, structures. It helps you to float in the wind. Dispersed by wind. So air is wind. So by looking at A, you cannot get the answer. You got to look at B. Hooks. Tells you it will hook onto the fur of animals. So for B must be by animal. Very straightforward question. Now, under cycles, you also learn about matter. That matter has mass, occupies space. And why is it a cycle? Because you can change the state. Alright? Solid, liquid, gas. By giving it heat, heat gain, you will change a solid to liquid. Heat gain, you will change liquid to gas. Heat loss, change from gas to a liquid. Heat loss, change from liquid to a gas. This is a cycle that can continue depending on uh, whether the matter is getting heat or losing heat. And so you also um, must know that we talk about solid, liquid, gases. What are their certain characteristics? So for example, they will all have mass and occupy space, right? Because they are matter. Talk about definite shape. We should have a definite shape. Of course, only solid have definite shape. Liquid have no definite shape. It can go into the containers of different shapes. Gas have no definite shape. That's why it can blow up balloons of different shapes. How about definite volume? Solids have definite volume. Liquids have definite volume. 
All right. So, can be compressed. And only one thing can be compressed, right? When matter is in the gaseous state, then it can be compressed. The volume can become less. So here they're changing from one container to a different container of different shape. This tells me it's talking about shape here. Alright, so it tells me liquid here has a different shape. Liquid has a fixed volume, a definite volume, so it cannot be volume. Mass would, doesn't change, right? And the state didn't change, it's still a liquid. When you pour from here to here. So answer here is three shape changed. You also learned that, uh, let's take a look at this question as a reminder of pause in case you have not been pausing. Don't just listen, uh, try it. Jasmine lowers two plastic bottles into a basin shown. Now very careful here, you must read the picture. There's a cap here and here it is cut out, which means here air can escape. So when this thing happens, right, what happens when you try to press this down, some water will go in, fill up this part. Right, there'll be air inside. Why is it some water can go in? Because here the air is compressed. That's why water can go in because water compresses some of the air inside. But why can't water go in further? Because air occupies space. Why? Because air is matter, and matter occupies space. In this case here, Water level will reach all the way up to here. Why? Because water will take up the space left behind by the air that escape. Explain the answer for A. I just explain it here. Right? So I must explain two parts this part and the part above. Now, don't be frightened by such questions. It's very easy to do. Okay? Separately. Alright? Water could go in a bit. Why? Because air in the bottle, I must be very careful, huh? air in the bottle. Don't just write air, because air can be outside. And the bottle can be compressed. And the bottle can be compressed. Okay? Water could not go in more. Why? Because air occupies the space inside the bottle. Okay, my students always complain that my handwriting is very bad huh? and they are right. Okay, so sorry about this. So try to put up with it and try to listen to me saying out the answer. And for B here, Again, I just explained earlier on. Write down the explanation for the water level in bottle B. Very simply here. I write it here, okay? Let me try to be neater this time. No. Air escaped through the hole on top as water enters below to take up the space of the escaping air. Is it neater now? I hope it is. Now, next one. This kind of question by now, right, you should have seen it a million times, okay? That's an exaggeration, but what I mean to say is, it's so common, all right? You have a container here, and some air inside, 300 ml, cm, cubic centimeter of air inside. So inside here, the part in red here is 300 cubic centimeter of air. So sorry, I read wrongly. Yeah? The palm is here. The palm is the one containing 300 cubic centimeter of air. The air is then palm in the container. Inside here is 500 cubic centimeter. This is my fault for not reading carefully. Yeah? So the whole container, the whole container, oh, I'm wrong again. You see, how reading carefully is important. Palm contains 300 cubic centimeter of air. Container's volume is 500 cubic centimeter. But here you notice, of the 500 cubic centimeter, 
100 cubic centimeter is taken up by water which means the remaining part here in red is taken up by the air and that's 400 cubic centimeter of air so what's the volume of air in the container when the piston is pushed all the way in now if mr long were to set this question i would definitely give one option to be 700 why because there will be students who will add 300 and 400 thinking they'll give 700 which is wrong of course this question tests you on the idea that air can be compressed okay or gas can be compressed air is a mixture of gases so when you pump in the gases in the gases will just be compressed inside here the volume here remains at 400 it doesn't change the glass container cannot expand because it's a solid the shape doesn't change the volume of the container doesn't change answer for this remains at 400 now the last part about cycle is about water cycle you got to know that how states change between liquid to gas gas to liquid liquid to solid and solid to liquid all right i must know the names of these processes like melting evaporation boiling condensation and freezing you must understand the terms melting point boiling point of water melting point of water zero degrees celsius freezing point of water zero degrees celsius boiling point of water 100 degrees celsius recently my t6s huh? some of them forgotten that the boiling point of water is at 100 degrees celsius and they give the answer 120 degrees celsius all right remember if you don't revise you will forget understanding the role of uh, evaporation and condensation in water cycle and therefore the role of heat without heat which comes from the sun all right primarily comes from the sun there is no evaporation therefore there will be no water cycle that's why sun is so important and how uh, water pollution is very important because that's usually caused by men how that affects the amount of drinkable water that we have so how can we what can we test you on we can test you all these things when ice is melted it melts and changes water at zero degrees celsius when water is cooled it freezes and changes to ice at zero degrees celsius when water is heated it boils and changes to steam at 100 degrees celsius when steam is cooled it condenses to become water we will can also test you on rate of evaporation and the factors that affect it there are three factors the amount of wind the temperature and the place and the exposed surface area all right these three things let's take a look at this now fill in these boxes with the processes all right so what happens in condensation well condense a uh, gas condensed to a liquid all right so what's a gas under water this gas is called water vapor will condense into so water sorry yeah yeah so here is a process right my right process here water will evaporate water evaporate the process into water vapor water vapor will condense into water droplets and that will be your clouds the clouds is actually liquid huh? not gas clouds will fall as rain rain will flow when rain comes down into the bodies of water that will gain heat and evaporate so why is the water cycle important to men well water cycle is important why is that important it's important because living things need water to survive and the water cycle is important to living things and we are living things because it provides us with a continuous supply of fresh water that is the reason and that's the answer for this question why is water cycle important to men because it provides men with a continuous supply of water just imagine if there's no more evaporation at all there will be if there's no more evaporation at all there'll be no more water vapor no condensation no rain no clouds no rain and we will not have any more supply of fresh water right let's go to something on evaporation 
four cinema towers are soaked with equal amount of water and put on the same clothesline dry in four different ways. So by looking at this, you know this is a factor on called exposed surface area. Please don't write the short form inside your answer. Tower A dry out the fastest, D is the slowest. Why? It shows about exposed surface area. So I will ignore the part of temperature because they're all at the same place. I ignore about the mass because the mass here, they are similar towers. The mass didn't change. The water is a different substance. That's nonsense. The exposed surface area affects the rate of evaporation. Very simple, straightforward answer. This is a very common question. All of you must memorize how to answer this. Okay, I've trained you all very um, long time to train you in this. So please refer to the notes on water cycle. Hannah set up an experiment as shown below. He, she heated some pond water until there were big bubbles observed throughout the liquid. A steel tray was placed over the beaker. Substance X was then formed on the surface of the steel tray. So heat source, heat the water, water boils into uh, change into steam and steam is invisible. I repeat, steam is invisible. Steam is water vapor at 100 degrees Celsius. These white clouds are actually just condensation. Huh? Or when the when the hot steam touches the air, it starts to condense. So what's the two processes happening here? So there were uh, things happening called boiling is happening and condensation is happening. Some of the steam touches the steel plate and condenses here. Some of the steam touches the air and condenses in the air to form the white clouds, which are actually tiny water droplets. Boiling is happening here. You can see all the bubbles coming out. So what is substance X? This is, ask you what is a substance. Huh? They didn't ask you for the state. So let's say substance X is, X is tiny water droplet. Now, second question. Explain why there is a drop in the amount of substance X forming the steel tree after some time. Because this is exposed to the surrounding, right? So X evaporates into water vapor. Water will evaporate and it's continuously right, bombarded by the hot steam and uh, hot mist is coming up. You will gain heat from the hot water vapor below as well. And these tiny water droplets will also evaporate. That's why it decreases. All right, that ends our discussion and revision on water cycle. If you have lasted through all this lesson, this close to half an hour, excellent. All right, you deserve a break. Go have your break, your snack, a rest time, watch some anime or something. All right, take care. And the next thing we're going to revise will be on energy.